Good day, everyone. I am Athena Arguez as well from BSN 1A. And the topic that I will be discussing today is all about the concepts of health, wellness, and well-being. Learning outcomes. By the end of this presentation, the learner will be able to first define the health, wellness, and well-being. Second, identify influences and client definitions of health, wellness, and well-being. And the last one is identify the seven components of wellness. Introduction. Nurses' understanding of health and wellness largely determines the scope and nature of nursing practice. Also, client self-beliefs influence their health practices. We cannot deny that at some point, we think of health and wellness or well-being as the same thing, or at the very least, as accompanying one another. However, health may not always accompany well-being. A person who is a terminal illness may have a sense of well-being. Conversely, another person may, have, may lack a sense of well-being, yet be in a state of good health. For many years, the concept of disease was the yardstick by which health was measured. In the late 19th century, the how of disease was the major concern of health professionals. The 20th century, they focused on finding cures for diseases. Currently, healthcare providers are increasing their emphasis on promoting health and wellness in every individual's families and communities. So what is health? Health was traditionally defined in terms of the presence or absence of disease. We have also another definition of health. According to Florence Nightingale, she defined health as a state of being well and using every power that, that the individual possesses to the fullest extent. Another, according to the World Health Organization, or WHO, they defined health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. This definition reflects concern for the individual as a total person functioning physically, psychologically, and socially. Mental processes determine people's relationship with their physical and social surroundings, their attitudes about life, and their and their interaction with others. It also places health in the context of environment in which people's lives and their health are affected by everything they interact with, not only environmental influences such as climate and the availability of food, shelter, clean air, water to drink, also other people including our family, lovers, employers, co-workers, friends, and associates. We have also another definition of health by Talcott Parsons. He is an eminent American sociologist and creator of the concept sick rule. He conceptualized health as the ability to maintain normal rules. In 1953, the U.S. President's Commission on Health Needs of the Nation made the following statement about health. Health is not a condition, but it is an adjustment. It is not a state, but a process. So this process adapts the individual not only to our physical, but also our social environments. The American Nurses Association, in its social policy statement, they state that health and illness are human experiences. Therefore, the presence of illness does not preclude health, nor does optimal health preclude illness. We have here the personal definitions of health. So health is the highly individual perception. So we have different, each of us have different definitions or interpretations of health. And these are the following examples of those individuals who would probably say they are healthy even though they have physical impairments that would consider an illness. First, a 15-year-old 
with diabetes takes injectable insulin each morning. He plays on the school soccer team and is editor of the high school newspaper. A 32-year-old is paralyzed from the waist down and needs a wheelchair for mobility. He is taking accounting at a nearby college and uses a specially designed automobile for transportation. A 72-year-old takes antihypertensive medications to treat high blood pressure. She is a member of the Neighborhood Golf Club, makes handicrafts for a local charity, and travels two months each year. We have also the uh, definition or those people who describe health as the following, being free from symptoms of disease and pain as much as, as, much as possible being able to be active and to do what they want or must, being in good spirits most of the time. So obviously, uh, health, wellness, and well-being have many definitions or interpretations. That's why nurses um, need to be familiar, familiar with the most common aspects of the concept, concept of health, wellness, and well-being in in order for them to consider how they individualize their patient care or in the specific clients. These characteristics indicate that health is not something that a person achieves suddenly at a specific time, but it is an ongoing process, a way of life through which a person develops and encourages every aspect of the body, our mind, and feelings to indicate harmoniously as much as possible. So nurses should be aware of their own personal definitions of health and appreciate that other people have their own individual definitions as well. A person's definition of health influences behavior related to health and illness. So by understanding clients' perceptions of health and illness, Nurses will be able to provide more meaningful assistance to help their patient or client regain or attain as a state of health. So as I've mentioned, we have different interpretations or definitions of health and we should respect that because we have the autonomy to choose or to believe what we intended to be. So these are the following questions that nurses can ask to their clients or to the other people for them to explore their personal definition of health. First is, is a person more than a biophysiological system? Is health more than the absence of disease symptoms? Is health the ability of an individual to perform work? Is health the ability of an individual to adapt to the environment? Is health a condition of a person's actualization? Is health a state or a process? Is health the effective functioning of self-care activities? Is health static or changing? Are health and wellness the same? Are disease and illness different? Are there levels of health? Are wellness, health, and illness separate in titles or points along a continuum? Is health socially determined? And do you rate your health and why? Wellness and well-being. When we say wellness, it is a state of well-being. We have here basic aspects of wellness and this include the following self-responsibility, an ultimate goal, a dynamic, growing process, daily decision-making in the areas of nutrition, stress management, physical fitness, preventive health care, and emotional health. And the most importantly, when we say wellness, it is the whole being of the individual. So seven components of wellness. This was proposed by ANSPA, I don't know the correct pronunciation, 
Anspa, Hamrick, and Rosato. So these are the three authors of the seven components of wellness. They realize optimal health and wellness that people must deal with the factors within each component. So these are the following. First component is environmental. This is the ab ability to promote health measures that improve the standard of living and quality of life in the community. This includes influences such as food, water, and air. Second, the ability, second component is social. It is the ability to interact successfully with other people within the environment of which person is a part to develop and maintain intimacy with significant others and to develop respect and tolerance for those with different opinions and beliefs. So from the word itself, social, this is our interaction with our human beings. Third is emotional. The ability to manage stress and to express emotions appropriately. Emotional wellness involves the ability to recognize, accept, and express feelings and to accept one's limitations. So this emotional includes our um, how we manage our feelings or emotions. Fourth is physical. This is the ability to carry out daily tasks, achieve fitness, maintain adequate nutrition and proper body fat, avoid abusing drugs and alcohol or using tobacco products. And when we say physical, this is the generally practice positive lifestyle or um, way of life. So another component is spiritual. This is the belief in some force, nature, science, religion, or a higher power that serves to unite human beings and provide meaning and purpose to life. So it includes a person's own morals, values, and ethics. Another component is intellectual. This is the ability to learn and use information effectively for personal, family, and career development. Intellectual wellness involves striving for continued growth and learning to deal with new challenges effectively. So intellectual, this includes our mindset on, on how we deal our problems in life. And the last component is occupational. This is the ability to achieve a balance between work and leisure time. A person's belief about education, employment, and home influence, personal satisfaction, and relationship with others. So those are the seven components of wellness. So we have here an example. A person who learns to control daily stress levels from a physiological perspective is also helping to maintain the emotional stamina needed to cope with the crisis. Or in other words, if we know how to um, control our stress levels psychologically, it also helps us to maintain our emotional stamina, which is needed to um, cope with our problems. So wellness involves working on all aspects of it. Well-being is a subjective perception of vitality and feeling well. can be described objectively, experienced, and measured and can be plotted on a continuum. We should always remember that well-being or wellness is a component of health. So these are the following reasons why nurses need to clarify their understanding of health, wellness, and well-being. First is nurses' definitions of health largely determine the scope and nature of nursing practice. For example, when health is defined narrowly as a physiological phenomenon, nurses confine themselves to assisting clients to regain normal physiological functioning. When health is defined more broadly, the scope of nursing practice in, enlarges correspondingly. 
Also, people's health beliefs influence their health practice practices. That's why nurses should um uh understand or respect the health values and practices of their client because as what I have mentioned, you have different definitions or interpretation interpretations about health. Also, nurses need to ensure that a plan of care developed for an individual relates to the client's concept of health rather than the nurse's belief, belief system. Otherwise, the client may fail to respond to the health care treatment. That's why we need to respect, um, understand each uh, individual because we have our own perspective in anything else. So summary, health was traditionally defined in terms of the presence or absence of disease. So these are the following interpretations or definitions of health according to Florence Nightingale and to the World Health Organization and Alcott Parsons. Also, these are the another health definitions and wellness, basic aspects of wellness, the seven components of health, which is environmental, social, emotional, physical, spiritual, intellectual, and occupational. So the references, this is from the reference I am of Sir Lendel Kelly B. So if you have any clarifications, questions, you can ask or you can read or review this PPT for you to understand it well. So I guess that ends my report and thank you.